Well, <clears throat> another takeover has come, and another takeover has gone. NXT TakeOver Phoenix was, I mean, it was just like the absolute most fantastic and like nail biting like ride it, it was what is the words i'm looking for spectacular awesome top notch um i can't say exuberant that doesn't really make sense but nxt takeover tonight was without a doubt just another one of those takeovers that just are, it literally stole the weekend or as i put in the thumbnail took over you know it did take over the royal rumble weekend no one's going to remember this weekend because of you know whatever happens tomorrow night at the royal rumble <clears throat> and i want to excuse you guys or excuse me for um my cough I, I i'm pretty sure i'm coming down with something so I got a nice uh, hot tea. I don't know if it's because I'm down with something or just my throat in general. I, I don't know. But I, I do know um, this show, it was so good. I am all smiles. Cheryl, she sat with me. She watched it with me. So I want to – I really want to thank her for sitting with me. I mean she had a headset on and was watching something. But you know, she, she was looking at the screen. Um, she even pointed out something about Tommaso Ciampa, uh, that I'll have to bring up, uh, when I get to the match. <clears throat> it was kind of funny. Um, I wouldn't have looked and noticed if she hadn't said something. It kind of reminded me of my sister, Amber. But, um, man, TakeOver, NXT TakeOver Phoenix. Uh, I'm so happy that, uh, that we get this, right? That we were able to get this and that we're able to enjoy something like we get to enjoy TakeOver. Because as, as, as intrigued as I am with the Royal Rumble, none of it is um, – the sort. none of it is as, as exciting to me as this was, as the anticipation. Like even when it was starting, I, I was just sitting there. I was like, yes, it's finally – like I'm just so excited. It hasn't even – like the first match hasn't even started yet. And this crowd in Phoenix was amazing. More Ronaldo was on point tonight. I loved this show. Call me impartial. That's fine. I do prefer takeovers over the main cards. I, I would – I guess I wouldn't be mad if we got more in a year. But <clears throat> in the long run, I think it's it's good that we, we stick around where we are. So, yeah, man. NXT TakeOver. Um – Man, I, I just – from the opening match to the close, I didn't – much like I said with Blackpool, I honestly don't think I found one bad match on this entire show, which, you know, when you look at the main roster and how it, things go with them, that's rarely ever the case. This, I mean – yeah, you, some people might try to say that the, the NXT women's title match wasn't um, the best. But, you know, it, it wasn't – I mean, yeah, it wasn't Ember Moon and Asuka or Asuka Bailey or, or or Sasha Bailey, But, you know, it was still really, really, really good. Um, holy shit, Ricochet versus Johnny Gargano. Match of the night. Some may say that it was the tag team championship with War Raiders and Undisputed Era. No, it it was it was Ricochet, and it was Johnny Gargano. Johnny Takeover um, is I I think he is Mr. Takeover. I mean he had the best matches last year with these takeovers, and he's having the best matches to start out 2019. 
Um, you may hear my girlfriend in the background. She's trying to get uh, her youngest to get his tooth out, and he's fighting with her. So this will be fun. So just don't mind that. She's just trying to get his tooth out, and he's not wanting her to. So, <laughs> But yeah, Johnny Gargano is literally – you know, Johnny takeover tonight, at, at least for tonight. Uh, so we do, we, I mean, we have a new North American champion. I went five for five tonight on my predictions for takeover. I am, I am happy. Um, I knew Shayna Baszler would not lose this championship. Um, if they didn't have plans to keep her, or if they had plans to keep her around, there was no way she would lose. Uh, it honestly didn't make you know sense for Champa to lose because Black is, I think, going to the main roster. He'll probably have a match come take over in Brooklyn, and then that will probably be a send off. I won't be shocked if he doesn't show up in the Royal Rumble tomorrow night. I won't be shocked. Um. So yeah, all in all, this this was a superb, a superb, sh superb show. Um, from start to finish, <clears throat> I loved everything, uh, every bit of this show. Uh, if you guys haven't already checked, the preview and predictions is on the channel. You guys can go see my Monday Night Raw review, my SmackDown review. Those are both up. Um, to yes, or today was supposed to be episode one of the 2K19 Universe Mode. Unfortunately, I had issues with the rendering process. I did post a video giving you guys the results of what that rumble was. Um, if you guys want, I, I have no problem going back and uploading what I can that I do have that I had already saved. It will be very bare bones, and you probably won't get to see most of it. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. My nose is itching. But um, I can do that. Just let me know in the comments. Also, uh, the Best of the Best podcast, or Best of the Best countdown, that was posted yesterday for everyone who's not a Patreon. It's the top 10 Royal Rumble winners. You guys can go check out that video. It is up on the channel. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let me see what else. Patreon. Let's go ahead and let's talk about uh, our social media and ways that you can support us. First off, you can go to our Twitter at YoBroGaming1, you guys can go there, follow us, tweet at us, you'll be able to get video updates. You can also check us on Facebook at YoBro Nation. Uh, if you want to donate to Streamlabs, Streamlabs, that link is down in the description as well. That's YoBro Gaming and Reviews. You also can join us on the Discord and chat with us and chat with each other as a part of the uh, Discord part of the nation. Um, if you want to be a VIP in there, well, there is a very simple way that you guys can do that. Oop, if it will come up. Patreon.com forward slash YoBro Nation. Six tiers to choose from. Becoming a VIP member of the Discord. That is there. <clears throat> if you are a Patreon, you are a VIP member. Uh, if you would like to be a monitor or moderator of the Discord, or if you would like to have con contributions and credit and be in control of the channel or have some control. You can also become a producer or an executive producer here on the channel. You also get early access to Best of the Best, the Yo Bro Nation podcast, and the Retro Rewind, which I have a new one that will be posting Thursday on Patreon and then Saturday for everyone else. It's WCW NWO sold out to our 1998. That will be on the channel. I will be doing AEW coverage. Uh, I think I might be posting a video. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I might be posting a video on Patreon uh, for that uh, this week, possibly. Uh, behind the scenes vlogs, I'm going to be recording uh, videos and then editing that together. Um, so that will be posted probably next week, the beginning of February. Um, this week. Also part of the Patreon, you get exclusive classic Raw reviews, uh, retro Raws, whatever you really want to call it. That will be on the channel. That, I believe, is getting posted either Tuesday or Wednesday. I, I don't know. Uh, scheduling and all that. 
I mean, I have to get that straightened out. So, uh, but yeah, then you get uh, exclusive access to vote on what's the next retros, which that will be posted soon for the next one after this in two weeks. Lots and lots of stuff on Patreon. Join the nation. Six tiers to choose from. Go in, at least take a look, and see maybe if there's something on there that interests you. All right. If, for whatever reason, you're not interested in doing Patreon, there is another option that you guys can go and help support the channel. Go to our T Public store, tpublic.com forward slash Yo Bro Nation. Buy our merch. We have the new Yo Bro Nation shirt. We have the one that I was wearing the other day, the Yo Bro Nation Recess Never Gets Old t-shirt, the Charlotte Reigns shirt, and the classic throwback Yo Bro Gaming and Review shirt. I'm definitely probably buying that one soon. Um, yeah, that's that's the main ways that with Streamlabs you guys can really help support the channel. And, and, and it's not something you guys have to do. The merch is for you guys. And if you're Patreon, I'll give you free merch, free bags, free phone cases, um, free T-shirts. Whatever you want, you just got to put in what your birthday is. That That's what you guys can do there. Um, and if you guys don't really feel comfortable doing any of that, <clears throat> you guys can just simply like and share these videos, comment on these videos. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Make sure in your settings that you get to receive all notifications of what's going on with the channel. That is another fantastic way you guys can help. It's just liking and sharing. Um, so that's pretty much going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and get into this review. This was NXT TakeOver Phoenix, which took place in Phoenix, Arizona at the Talking Stick Resort Arena. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> like I said, this show... <clears throat> I'm going to do my best, my very best, to describe to you all these matches as best as I can. But honestly, if you didn't watch the show, you really should just go back and watch. That is honestly what I can tell you is the best thing that you can do. Um, because there's there's no amount of words and i took really really good notes like i made sure to write down the high points i made sure to kind of write down what the feel the match was like but it, it's just the match was so good you just kind of got to go and you just kind of got to watch these for yourself because like i like i was saying this was a a, a, a a supremely great show it was that good so i'm going to try my best to describe them to you uh, you know, but if it doesn't, if you're like, no, 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 just go watch them. Just go watch them. All right. So the opening match was for the NXT Tag Team Championships. It was the War Raiders of Hanson and Rowe versus Undisputed Eras, Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong. Bobby Fish came out with them, but you didn't really see Bobby Fish at all throughout the match. Uh, he did come out with their Slammy Award. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like Bobby Fish is kind of taking a um, a backseat to what um, the rest of them are doing. Um, ooh, I sound weird. Uh, but yeah, a very um, a very cool entrance for the War Raiders. The drum, and you see these Viking warriors or knights or whatever they were. They're coming out with just fire, <clears throat> and then the War Raiders coming out with some new gear. Uh, just freaking awesome. I, I knew when they came out with that entrance, this was their night. I had no doubt uh, in my mind. But the match started off fast. These guys just punishing each other. Uh, Hanson just like diving around. Um, but as the match started to progress, you, you see Undisputed Era trying to cut the ropes off, you know, trying to cut the ring in half, uh, kind of keeping, I think it was, yeah, keeping Hanson in the ring. Um, but, you know, the Raiders, they, the War Raiders were just too strong. Uh, for them to be kind of held down in this match. Um, some really strong, like, stiff knees and, and and backbreakers and kicks and punches. I mean, this was a very physical match, especially with Roderick Strong, man. He was, like, he was hitting them hard. Um, I hate how I can't ever seem to figure out which side is which with this. Um, you know, they kind of started working on the legs a little bit, uh, did Undisputed Era. Uh, at one point, I think it was was Roe picked up um, 
yeah, picked up Kyle O'Reilly, tossed him into Roderick Strong after he got the tag. That happened a few times. These guys just, you know, and you had a lot of mocking happening with uh, Undisputed Era, like doing the whole tag and everything. Um, you had a series of exchanges. Um, they ended up hitting the pop-up power bomb and getting a two count, or the pop-up power power slam. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, this match, man. You saw really how agile um, Hanson was in this match. Him just like doing the cartwheels and and doing these handspring, you know, reversals, and it was just it was a sight to behold. I knew the guy was agile, but these guys just took it to another freaking level. Like I said, trying to describe this match and thinking of all the story beats, it. I mean, the match was just so freaking fantastic. Um. <clears throat> I just I loved it. I loved this match. I loved the progression of it. I loved how it ended. You know, with the the exchanges at the end, the series of punches and kicks, and how they were just doing all that stuff. Uh, like at the end, I honestly thought um, at one point, undisputed era, uh, several points, I thought undisputed era was going to win. Um, like okay, they hit a superplex. Did Roderick Strong, and then Kyle O'Reilly came off with the diving knee. I thought that was it. They ended up hitting the high-low. I thought that was going to be it. Um, they went for a second high-low, and Hanson did that cartwheel to avoid it. Um, punched him, clotheslined him, did the handspring. Remember that old, that, that, that bounce that Tojiri used to do off of the ropes? He did that, back-elbowed them, um, ends up getting... <clears throat> ends up getting Roderick Strong put out of the ring. They hit this... They pick up... Um, no, no, no. They, they kept Roderick Strong in the ring. They did their power slam, power bomb combo. And then Roderick Strong rolled out of the ring. Or no, it was Kyle O'Reilly. Had Roderick Strong, brought him up, did that assisted leg drop off the top rope, and Roe pinned him... Um, for the three count, you have new NXT Tag Team Champions. I'm telling you, there was so, there was so much in this match. Um, it was so hard to really just kind of work through it. Like, okay, what happened? What happened? Like, I just finished it. And I'm recording this as quick as I can because I got, you know, internet issues. If, if even one person gets on the internet, um, it's, it's going to completely, like, mess up your stream. And, oh, here she is. Here she is. Come over here. Come over here. Say hello. Oh, come on, just 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 come over here and just peek your head in. Come on. Oh, she says she looks like crap. She does not. She looks gorgeous. I wish she would just just pop her head in for just a second. I'm gonna have her on here tomorrow night with the Royal Rumble review. <laughs> you know, she's real if she's up to it. I'm not gonna force her, but it would be kind of nice. I go on her channel, CherylWaters.com. You know, on YouTube, I, I get on there for her. <laughs> but. Yeah, this this for me the this opening match was was pretty much like match of the night for me, but little did I know the the way the rest of this card was gonna shake out and how much better it was gonna get. Um, Pete Dunne and Tony Storm were there. Um, Velveteen Dream showed up. He was in the crowd. <laughs> Jeez, he's he's in me right now. Um, <laughs> the second match of the night I, 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 and let me know in the comments if I sound like crap um, I feel like I sound a little scratchy compared to normal I think she's going to refill that for me thank you sweetheart um, she's really sweet she really is um, Matt Riddle versus Cassius Ono this is their third meeting they kept pushing home the fact that Matt Riddle has already won the first two in Cassius Ono. You know, he's this guy who's coming, you know, taking all the new buzz guys who are coming in and knocking them down to the back of the line and all that stuff. Right off the bat, this was probably the, the most physical match of the night as far as, like, just pure hard hitting. Um, at one point, I thought Matt Riddle's face was caved in uh, with that boot that Cassius Ono gave him. It looked like his, I mean, it just, the, the slow motion shot of it looked like his face was just like caved in. It, it looked rough. It really did. Um, Cassius Ono with the Phoenix Suns, the old school Phoenix Suns color scheme. Um, 
Matt Riddle, dude's super strong, apparently. He's, like, deadlifting Cassius Ono during this match. Like I said, very physical. Uh, lots of stiff shots by both Cassius Ono and Matt Riddle. Probably Ono even more so. You know, the old school veteran. Kind of like, um, you know, Bob Holly used to do whenever he'd get with the younger guys. Or the newer guys, you know, coming through. You know, He'd be stiff with them. But that was just kind of how it is. And, you know, Cassius Ono, 20 years. He, he's a very old school um, mentality type of guy. So, you know, makes sense to me. Just kind of checking, like, everyone's working on this stuff now. I was not going to watch the pre-show. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, very unique uh, defense, actually, during this match by Cassius Ono on a couple occasions. Everyone knows that Matt Riddle is a guy who is, you know, he comes out and flip-flops and he wrestles barefoot. Cassius Ono, and I've never seen anyone else, you know, it, you know, so far uh, since he's been there, see them do this to Matt Riddle. He, you know, when he's trying to go for a German, uh, Matt Riddle is, you know, Cassius, he uses his weight to hold himself down and then stomps on the foot of Matt Riddle and, you know, tries to, you know, he bites the toe at one point. So he actually goes for the foot. Um, these guys end up exchanging a bunch of knees. Uh, you have a missed rolling elbow by uh, Cassius Ono. Or, sorry, missed rolling elbow. A knee by uh, Cassius Ono. He goes for a senton, goes for another senton, gets caught in the bro mission. Um, match keeps going. These guys just keep pounding away on each other, beating up each other. Uh, Cassius Ono actually reaches out to shake the hand of Matt Riddle. And, um, you know, he grabs it like much like um, Cassius Ono did to him in their last match and just knees him right dead in the chin. Uh, and then gets on him after doing this very, like, high angle belly to back suplex. Like, Cassius lands right here high and tight on his shoulder. And then he just gets on him and just starts wailing away on him. And all Cassius Ono can do is, like, cover up and try to keep himself from being up. But. The, you know, he starts tapping while getting his head pushed in, uh, and that's how that match ends. Um, there was a really another good spot. Um, the Liger Bomb by Cassius Ono, the Moonsault. You know, a big guy like Cassius Ono doing a Moonsault off the top rope. Um, this was a good match. It was probably the weakest of the matches, in, in my opinion. Uh, don't listen to me. I'm just a 62-sub guy on YouTube. Uh, what do I know? Um... <laughs> but that was like, yeah, this was probably the weakest match for me of the entire card. But still a really fantastic job, you know, matchup. Um, this definitely was built like a like a kind of a blow off for a match, what it would be like. Um, so I definitely really enjoyed this match. Um I got a laugh. I got a chuckle out of it when they just start moves and I'm sitting there and Cheryl's behind me and I'll just be like, Oh gosh, and she'll just like chuckle at me because I because I'm so into the matches, uh, which you don't get me on Raw. Raw, I'm usually sitting there just kind of like, uh. NXT, it's completely different. I might have to do my NXT reviews again. Ooh, look. Look at this. You guys can see that. Oh, gosh, you can see that hot steam. It's so hot. You can see it on screen? Yeah, you can. Look at that. Ooh. You like my little setup? <laughs> she just noticed what I'm doing for my camera, my microphone. <laughs> gosh oh so we move on to the north american championship match Gani Gar johnny gargano can you turn that back on please <laughs> yeah i use it Oop, thank you uh, johnny gargano comes in like at first i thought it was flash gear but the more i looked at it, i was like oh no that's the old school X-Men, like the old school Wolverine color scheme. And then even Ricochet comes out in the Spider-Man outfit, but it's the Miles Morales kind of look. My ears are really starting to mess with me. I think I'm getting sick. Um, I just love this cocky attitude Johnny Gargano has when he's coming out to the ring. And he's just like, like everyone loves me. Everyone knows I'm a good guy. But in reality, you're like, no, Johnny, you're kind of a dick. Um, I really kind of like that. You had dueling chants throughout the match. Some really good wrestling, some catches catch cam type stuff going on in the match at the beginning. The 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 the, the shit 
that Ricochet did in this match. Landing on his feet out of a hurricanrana. Out of a hurricanrana off the top damn rope. Just, just the shit that Ricochet does. This guy has top star written all over him. All over him. He looked amazing. And Johnny too. Johnny just... You really saw Johnny come into his own in this match. <clears throat> with how he's taking this character. Now, I don't know how long this will last, especially with, you know, the ending of the show with Champa retaining. But just Johnny showed who he was even at one point, you know, when they first started, you know, trying to one up each other. Ricochet reaches out his hand, he pulls up Johnny, says, "Who are you? What Johnny Gargano are you tonight?" And Johnny just leveled him. Johnny you could see and I like the way they did this where at first Johnny's like conflicted. He, you know, he's, and yes, I'm skipping over a lot of what happened in the match, but just follow me here. Johnny pulls up the mats to expose the floor, much like he did with Tommaso. And he's, he looks at it for a second. He's got Ricochet draped and he's looking at it like, I could do this. I can end this, but he chooses not to. And then later on, Johnny, you know, he's looking and he's thinking and he just like, screw it, wins in championships. He pulls the trigger and just does it. Seeing the, the, I guess you could say inner conflict within Johnny. Do I do this? Uh, don't I do this? I'm not really sure. My hair is just, I don't know what's up with my hair today. Um, gosh, I may need, actually need to cut this. Um, but you know, seeing that that inner conflict with Johnny and then finally putting him in the ring, hitting him with that DDT and just finishing the match was good. Um, man, you really saw just like the, 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 the pure um, strength of Ricochet in this match. Dude, you know, Johnny Gargano jumping in, you know, to do his little diving DDT and Johnny or him just grabbing him and just throwing him. And then he'd go do some flippy shit. I have so many notes. I wrote like this whole page and half of this page is all just notes on this match. Um, Johnny Gargano gets Ricochet up on the top rope. Goes to do her Karana. Ricochet catches him. Pulls him back up. Goes to do the powerbomb. Johnny flips through. It's like a 450 splash in midair. And damn Ricochet lands on his feet. Um, the corkscrew over the ropes. I mean, the the reversals with these two guys, Johnny Gargano reversing a hold into the you know the champ escape and him getting picked up and put into an exploder into the corner. I mean, these guys did so much in this match. It was it was so so fantastic, so fantastic. I could go on the tag team match, this match, the main event, the women's match. I could I could literally go on forever. And I'm trying to temper myself, right? I'm saving my throat for tomorrow night because I know I have a lot to talk about. I'm really wanting to do the live reaction for the Royal Rumble tomorrow. It's really going to depend on how I feel with my throat. That's why I'm, I'm I'm trying not to do too much right now. But um, Johnny Gargano going to the outside, trying to avoid um, Ricochet when he's going to go up for his little Phoenix splash, that little, you know, whatever it is where he just lands on his back. Um, he goes – Diving like a swung tom, a suicide dive, tope, whatever you want to call it, over the turnbuckle, over the post, and lands on Johnny, throws him in the ring, go, hits him with um, a 450 splash, only gets a two count. Um, Johnny ends up getting him, hits him with a meeting him in the middle. He goes out. Johnny dives. Ricochet catches him. Johnny reverses that into her Karana, throws him in the ring, hits the diving DDT, two count. Um, he ends up putting Johnny Gargano in the Gargano escape. Um, just, just everything. Johnny, his taunting, Johnny's inner turmoil, Ricochet just being this fighting champion who's like, what can stop him? What can legit stop Ricochet? And it, it finally took Johnny deciding to go dark and be the bad guy to be a Tomasa Champa, which this plays into later, and hitting him with 
with that DDT, you know, hitting him with that suplex on the floor and then DDT in him and a really brutal one, right? Like it looked like he was just nailed, like spiked into the mat with that one. Finally, to win the North American Championship, and they even brought it out. Yes, he's competed at more takeovers than anyone, but his win-loss record was like the Cleveland Browns type of um, win-loss record type stuff. So um, I like I like the way Moro Ronaldo really plays up. You know, it doesn't matter how good tomorrow night's matches could be. With the, the team that they have announced, JBL and Jerry Lawler, Michael Cole and Corey Graves – doing one rumble and these people doing another rumble and it doesn't matter how good it is ultimately none of it's gonna matter because it's all gonna really kind of suck because you're not gonna have the commentary teams to really make these matches um really sound as good as they can as more ronaldo percy and nigel make the sound nigel is 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 growing on me um i think i'm starting to like nigel mcginnis more than i do Corey graves and i am a huge fan of Corey graves now nigel mcginnis tonight was he was he was just i can't snap my fingers i really suck guys i'm gonna take a drink of this it's it's hot too Ooh. holy shit it's hot i can't it's still look it's still steaming i can still see that I gotta be careful. I don't want to slip and drop this. I'll be screwed. Um, NXT Women's Championship. Um, before I move on, so yeah, Johnny Gargano finally wins a championship. Where does Johnny Gargano go from here? That's the question. Now, two things I want to do. One, I'm going to give my thought. I'm going to give my opinion. And I, I, I really, I'm asking you guys to put in the comments, where does Johnny go from here where does he go what do you guys predict him doing in two months come wrestlemania weekend um you guys let me know finally johnny's a singles champion does he go for the nxt championship do we see a diy reunion what do we get you guys let me know down in the comments i'm asking i want to see the comments i want to see the comments go and let me know and it, well, my opinion is I I don't think I don't think Johnny's going for the championship, um, at Takeover Brooklyn. I don't think he's going to go for the NXT Championship. I honestly think that's going to be Ricochet. Uh, I could see Aleister Black and Johnny Gargano, and then Champa versus Ricochet. I could see that happening. I could see a flip, and that's how you know Black leaves out he loses to him but do you really want black losing two takeovers in a row i don't know unless someone bigger comes in and black goes out that way so i don't know that, that that's my opinion i i just think i think johnny gargano just goes and he defends the championship probably against an alistair black you tie that up in a bow or, or maybe they do a fatal four-way maybe they go ahead and put all these guys in a fatal four-way and just just cross it right and they just get it over with who knows but I, I don't see Johnny Gargano going for the NXT Championship. I think he'll defend his title, uh, and I think he'll do it against probably Aleister Black. Um, who else is there? Or maybe Velveteen Dream. Maybe he gives it a shot against Velveteen. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll find out though, right? NXT Women's Championship. I can see a lot of people not liking this match, mainly with the end. Um, quite a few people probably did predict Bianca Belair to win. I did not. I honestly just, I didn't see how you can take Shayna Baszler, have her lose the championship again after a short reign, and then her still be on the roster, because I don't think they're going to call her up until after Mania. Uh, definitely now that she's still the champion. I could see her being in the Rumble tomorrow night. In fact, I think with her winning think her chances have gone up as far as her being able to be in that rumble at least for that one-off appearance you know champion being in there i don't see champa being in the rumble tomorrow night but i'll get to that um <clears throat> but the match look it was not it, it wasn't like this great classic but the story was good you know bianca belair 
you know, even though she's no longer undefeated, looks fantastic walking out of this. You know, you had Marina Shafir, you had Jessamyn Duke, both interfering in this match. And despite that, she still managed to fight out of the, um, I'm sorry, I have to read it because I can't remember how to pronounce it. Where, where am I at? Hold on, here we go. The Carafuda, Carafuta Clutch, the Carafuta Clutch, I don't know. Rear naked chokehold, okay? The rear naked chokehold. The Carafuta clutch. I can't pronounce things like that. I'm stupid, all right? I'm not that bright. But, you know, her getting that rear naked chokehold, or the sleeper, whatever you want to call it, her getting that in, and for Bianca Belair to a few times fight out of that and, you know, show the heart that she, you know, this was a, you know, even though she's a heel, was a baby face performance. Uh, by Bianca Belair, it was a it was good. I really like. I really enjoyed this. It was it was it was a baby face performance by Bianca Belair tonight, and it was by by my account at least her her best performance. Um, there was a spot though. She hit um she hit Shayna Baszler with her hair with that whip. And it broke the skin. Like, it cut her wide open. Woo! That looked, um, looked harsh. But, you know, Baszler started going for that shoulder and that arm, uh, setting up for the hold, setting her up to finish her off. Belair, she keeps fighting. Um, Baszler, you know, she even starts coming back, and she hits a spear only for a two count. And then Baszler hits that step up knee. Um... That's where she gets, you know, the ref takes a bump, and then here comes Shafir and Duke, and they're interfering. Uh, but, you know, Bianca, to her credit, she kept fighting. She fought them off. Um, but then Baszler ended up getting her in the, that uh, rear naked choke. Uh, she powered out of it and then suplexed her like a little exploder type thing. Um, Bel Air, she, you know, she's got her down. She goes up to the top. Um, I think it was... I want to say it was Shafir. Uh, tried to get up there. I didn't catch her. I was kind of looking off at something for a second, like writing something down. Uh, but she pushes her off, goes for that 450 splash, misses, um, gets put back into the clutch, tries fighting it off, right? She's trying to fight it off, gets to her feet, but then ultimately falls back and passes out, looking strong, you know, trying to fight it off and lost because she just basically couldn't finish. She, she was unable to continue the match that is a way and like i said again i'm just a guy who has 62 subs what do i know i didn't wrestle um that to me is a way that you make someone who i i think they're gonna push her as a baby face after this you, you got to right the way they finished it that's how you book a baby face in the loss right you know she's down but she didn't give up you know, she fought the odds, and her body gave out on her. You know what I mean? Her body gave up on her. She didn't give up. Her body did. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just looking at stuff. Oop, thanks. That came back down. You know, that is, to me, just the best way. The best way they could have ended this was just being like, okay. You know, she she lost, but she didn't give up. Mm. Oh, it's got a little bit of honey in it. That's really tasty. I like that. And it's really good. It's helping my throat out. I'm telling you, if I don't drink it, my throat's been horrible tonight. But Shayna Baszler, you know, she's retaining the championship. Um, she's definitely going to lose it come uh, TakeOver uh, Brooklyn, whatever they're going to go with. I don't break Brooklyn 5. Maybe they'll call it something else. But um, man, it's going to suck when we don't have these Brooklyn shows anymore. Because uh, Brooklyn's like the highlight of their their you know sh their takeovers every year. So, but I I loved the way NXT was able to book this. Now this has been the main card. It would have been some fuck finished where she just lost out um, because you know a hundred thousand people came in and she had her shoulders pinned to the mat. Yes, Bianca Belair is not undefeated anymore. I had that feeling. She wouldn't be main champion. I just had that feeling, but I didn't know how they would do it. I thought maybe a disqualification or maybe a count out or, or something like that. But 
the fact that they had her just pass out is is good. That to me though is a sign of a start of a babyface run. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, but it does. It looks like that's going to be the start of what is going to be her babyface run. And hats off to Triple H and his team for producing what to me was a very solid women's match. It will not be the best match of the weekend for the women. Um, that's probably going to go to, to um, Sasha and Ronda, in all honesty. I think they're going to be the best women's match one-on-one -on -one for the weekend. So, going to move on uh, to the main event. Tommaso Ciampa, Aleister Black for the NXT Championship. I loved all the hype packages tonight for all the matches that they did these four. They were just – they were all like just really awesome. You know what I mean? Like NXT is always doing really great with their their stuff like that. Mm. I'm telling you, my throat is just – it's trashed. I think it's the talking. I gotta get used to it. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to do the um, the uh, live reaction tomorrow. Not a guarantee. Not a guarantee. Uh, but I'm gonna try. It just really depends on how my throat's feeling tomorrow. So Champa comes out. Of course, the booze. Black comes out looking like a badass, like always. Uh, I like the jacket. I like the boots. Um, these guys start off, you know. <clears throat> kind of like a, a tug of war, I guess you could say. You know, going back and forth with these uh, color level tie ups. Champa slaps Black, just pisses him off. And then these guys, these guys start like exchanging back and forth, kicks and punches, and just kind of trying to wrestle each other down different holds. Uh, they end up on the outside, and this is where the match really slowed down. So I'm just kind of sitting there for like 10 minutes, just waiting for something to happen, just trying to scribble whatever I can down. Uh, Champa ends up getting uh, Black's knee, you know, connecting with the uh, ring steps and hurting his knee, and then tossing him into the, the the guard, you know, where his knee hits that. And then a good majority of this match, and it played in the rest of the match. You don't see this enough. And yeah, I know I gave JD some shit sometimes when he brought up with Charlotte, but really, people on the main roster don't sell their shit enough. It's like, oh, I'm hurt. Oh, when I make my comeback, everything's fine. I'm no longer hurt. No. Black sold this start to finish. That knee, from the moment he heard it till the very last move, sold the shit out of his knee. They need to be more like that on the main roster. Really, they do. So, yeah, Champa, you know, he's talking smack. Um, he's patting himself on the back and clapping when he does stuff sitting on the announcer's table. Uh, my girlfriend pointed out, Cheryl did, um, I hope no one gets offended by this, but she's looking at Tommaso Champ and she says, that guy has no penis. Or no, she, I'm sorry. She says, he has no wiener. And I'm like, what? She's like, look, you can see it. It's like tiny. It's like, maybe he's wearing a cup. She's like, no, that's not a cup. This is just no wiener. I'm like, oh my gosh, the, the things, and that's why I want her on commentary or on with me tomorrow night because I just I want her to tell everyone what her observation is with the Royal Rumble tomorrow night, being like that guy looks like he's got a tiny dick. That's what I want to hear, and that's what I want her to talk about because it's it's hilarious. I wrote it in the notes because I was like, I want people to know that you said that. Oh my gosh, I need this. My throat's starting to feel like tight and tense. Um, so yeah, Champa, you know, doing his great, great heel work. You know, he's just clapping and, and just doing all that. And then Black's trying to fight back. And, you know, they get these exchange of strikes with this German at the end. Uh, like, again, the knee being sold, you know, when every time Aleister Black would try to go for the, you know, Black Mass a couple of times... The knee, even if he'd hit it, he'd sell the knee afterwards. You know, oh my gosh, the knee. It, it kept him from being able to finish the move and to get the pin. It, He wasn't able to hit it. You know, he's trying to lift him up with his leg like he does, you know, with most of the matches. And his leg gave out. And, you know, and he misses because the knee gave out. It, it was just, it was so good, you know. You know, Champa hitting the uh, fairy tale ending. It didn't work. Um, <laughs> Champa, he's like... Again, 
like I said, this great heel work hits the Tower of London on the apron. He mocks Aleister Black by lifting him up, but then Black pops up and pops him with the knee. Oh, my chin's showing. Excuse me. I'm I'm all sorts of messed up, guys. Um, but then Champa hits him with the knee right back. Um, he ends up hitting that Black Mass, uh, but it isn't no good. Champa, he... Again, the parallels with him and Johnny now, I really do think these guys are going to work together, but something's going to happen. These two are going to split afterwards. But he's pulling up the mat, and he's it didn't really come into play um, during the rest of this match, but he's kind of arguing with the referee, and then here comes, you know, Aleister Black, and he hits him with the knees on – now to get him to the floor, uh, then he hits the black mass. Uh, doesn't get the cover. He goes for another black mass. Champa grabs the referee, puts him in front of him. The ref moves. Black goes for another one. Champa ducks it just a little bit, misses, um, tries to roll up Alistair Black. He rolls into the ropes. He grabs him, DDTs him off of the ropes, hanging man's DDT. Um, then picks him up, fairy tale ending, only a two count. Hits another one, just goes to pick him right back up. Um, Tries again, gets kicked by Aleister Black. He goes for another uh, Black Mass. His knee gives out, and then he gets hit with a fairy tale ending, and Tommaso Ciampa wins. That's a lot. The, the sequences at the end were insane. There was a lot that happened there at the end. So that was that was your your NXT Championship match. Um. Like I said, my match of the night is Johnny versus Ricochet. But this was a – Champa. if you look at him when he came back last year and how he was then to how he is now in this one year's time, he is so improved. And he definitely – you know, they even played it on commentary like he's so obsessed with being the champion. He didn't even accept his his – award his year end award because he wanted all his love and all his focus on that NXT championship. That's what was important to him. It's it's brilliant. Champa, he should have been superstar of the year in my book for 2018. And I hope they continue with him this year. God forbid he goes to the main roster because he's probably gonna be thrown on 205 Live. That's what will happen to him. He won't be treated worth shit. He won't see him in a mid-card championship run. He'll be tossed to 205 Live where he'll just fall to the wayside. Same with Johnny Gargano. Honestly, I hope they just both stay on NXT. Don't ever leave. Just do your takeovers a few times a year. Leave him in NXT. Who says they have to go to the main roster? Who says they have to be promoted? You know what I mean? Can we just can we just keep them where they are, please? Okay, I love the work these these guys are doing. I love the worst the work. Sorry, that Tommaso is doing. He's to me still the best part of NXT every week. The best part, and I don't want to see Vince McMahon and and Kevin Dunn who who messing shit up. I don't want to see it. So, <clears throat> but he's the champion. Where where? Like I said with Johnny, where does he go? Probably defends it against Ricochet, unless they decide to go ahead and wrap up God, uh, Johnny and him now. But I just – I don't know. I don't see Johnny being champion uh, or NXT champion. Maybe he defeats Ricochet, and then Johnny gets a title shot. But I don't, I don't think they'll do it until – at least May, so they can say it's been two years. Even if it's not in Chicago, you know, come – or sorry, June. Even if it's not Chicago, you know, it's been a two-year journey. We can wrap it up. That's what I think they probably do uh, with Champa and, and Johnny from this point. You know, so after Brooklyn, they'll go to wherever the fuck the takeover is come Money in the Bank weekend, and I think they finish that story out there. But between now and then, they start to work together again, maybe even become a team. You know, DIY reunites as heels and, 
you know, go for the tag titles, but ultimately lose, which is where Johnny screws him over and, you know, oh, I'm Johnny fucking wrestling and you're just Tommaso Champ and I don't trust you. This is all getting you, bitch. Now I'm going for your title. Maybe something like that happens. I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not a predictor. I'm not going to claim that I have inside sources that know what the hell's going on. Oh my gosh, my hair is just, oh God. Ah! My hair is such a mess, guys. Oh, hit the like button if you feel bad for my hair. Okay, okay, just stop, stop, stop. I'm just going to let my hair finish. Um, but yeah, this was your review for NXT TakeOver uh, Phoenix 2019. What did you guys think of NXT TakeOver? What would you rate this? What would you score this? I'm giving TakeOver a 9.5 out of 10. Only, only because... Um, only because I don't want to give it a perfect 10, I guess. Um, maybe, I, I guess I would have liked to have seen, uh, Black and Champa go just a little bit longer. Maybe five more minutes, I guess. I, just a nitpick thing. You know, that's pretty much it. That was all. Other than that, this show was pretty much perfect to me. I mean, I'm sure there's things that I missed that others are going to see. And, you know, I'm not great. You know, I'm taking notes. I'm talking to my girlfriend. I'm talking to the kids. I'm, you know, I'm doing everything. Speaking of, uh, I hope my kids are watching this. Liam, Nephi, Olivia, I love you guys. I hope you guys are having a great time. I hope you guys are having a good weekend. I know they're with their stepdad watching this as well. So awesome, awesome sauce. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's the takeover. I'm not going to take much more time. I'm going to kind of just get out of here. I will see you guys for sure live tomorrow night for the Royal Rumble review. Um, that will be tomorrow night. Perhaps, maybe, maybe I'll go ahead and I'll be on um, the, the uh, live reactions thing tomorrow night. Just depends. If my girlfriend sits and she's watching it with me, I'll do it just so you can hear our banter and hear us laughing back and forth because I think it will be hilarious just to hear the things that come out of her mouth. So I think that would be fun. I'll, I'll talk to her. If she's up for it, we'll probably do it. But that, uh, yeah, one more drink. So that's going to do it for me, guys. Remember, subscribe, hit the notification bell, Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, T Public, Streamlabs, all that shit. Go to it. Follow us. There's also a list of different channels you guys can go and watch. Joe Cronin, JD from New York. They do awesome reviews, better than I do. But they're the inspirations that I even do this. So thank you guys for joining me for the channel tonight. I hope you all had a good night. I'll see you all tomorrow night for the Royal Rumble. And peace out and yo bros. Or something like that.